I'm really pleased that Sheffield Hallam has been shortlisted for four Green GAN Awards. The impacts that universities have, not just on their students, but on the cities and the regions in which they're located, is very important. We should lead locally. And it's really important and really gratifying to see that there's clear evidence that that's having an impact on the city in ways that are long-term sustainable. It sometimes feels that universities just float on a sea of paper, the vast amounts of printing that we all do, so often things that we only look at once. What's impressive about the Green Pimp programme is that not only does it have a significant cost benefit to the university, it also has a significant environmental benefit, forcing us all to think a lot harder about whether we really need to print, and that can make a ma massive difference to the way we work as an organisation. Sheffield Hallam is one of the largest universities in the country, with more than 31,000 students and around 4,400 staff. Traditionally, a lot of our work took place using hard copy documents, lecture notes, assignments, meeting agendas, minutes and reports, student applications and lots of other types of information generated a huge amount of printing. We knew we needed to act to save the cost to the university and the planet. So we developed our blueprint for green print strategy. This combined a number of projects running over several years designed to reduce the amount of energy, paper, ink and other resources used in printing at the university. We needed a concerted effort from our staff, our suppliers and our students to make that happen. This is the team from Digital Technology Services at Sheffield Hallam that took this strategy forward. And this is how we did it. We originally started with a print strategy back in, uh, in 2010. At that point uh, we were aware as a university that we were producing about 45 million pages per annum but we had no basic grasp or understanding in terms of being able to audit how that was happening. We're uh, as a university heading towards uh, accreditation on ISO 14001. We saw print as a significant environmental impact for the university so we, we could see a clear business benefit if we could actually reduce the volume of printing and the number of devices we had in the university, reduce our energy footprint and, uh, and hopefully make some uh, reductions in the overall print volumes as well. So part of the strategy was uh, a reduction in standalone printers um, and replacing them with um, more group focused multifunctional devices such as this one. Um, and essentially what that did was reduce um, the amount of paper being printed on and the numbers of printers that were used across the university. Previously when anyone sent a job to print it would just spew straight out, select and release essentially holds it at the MFD or print it until you choose to release it. If you don't choose to release it after 10 hours um, that job will be uh, deleted. So the rollout of um, the MFDs and the associated rollout of Select and Release uh, came with its own challenges. How to communicate it to students, how to make sure that they're comfortable with it um, and see all the benefits that it's going to bring for them. We decided it was probably best if we got some of the students involved. Um, so we ran a pilot focus group, um, we pre-wrote guidance and instructions for the students and then presented it to them and had them try and follow it um, through to completion without any help from us um, and whenever they got stuck it was a flag for us that our guidance wasn't good enough and something needed changing so we took all the feedback from the students for that and um, eventually got something out that everyone that we tested seemed comfortable with and we were ready to roll out. We created screencasts that were available on the desktops um, on all student PCs, which was just telling them how to use the Select and Release. It's important that we had um, an additional presence actually in the learning centres at the time to help anyone that wasn't quite sure um, how to use the new system. Getting the staff in the learning centres um, used to the system as well, because it's one thing to ask someone to use a new system and then another to ask some people to support it. Um, those staff were largely library staff, they weren't IT, so they need to be confident enough not just to use it, but to teach it to other people. Obviously this was a shift culturally in how staff um, print. And we're all creatures of habit. We did it building by building. And as we did that, 
we made sure that stakeholders were informed at all times. Um, in advance of the change, we gave them the opportunity to feed back to us, uh, highlighted the print strategy, went to speak to them about the benefits of the new system, um, and in the vast majority of cases, um, people were more than happy. On the day of it going live, we actually visited every office and every person who was available to describe all the changes and do a bit of hand-holding uh, with them in the process to uh, allow them to digest the, uh, the changes that were happening. The area that I was in dealt with confidential documents. Those documents could sit on top of the printer for quite a while and although they are in secure areas there are people that could access it. So with the print release system it was a lot more secure. Documents only came out when the member of staff visited the MFD and used the print release system. But we used to have lots of students um, printing their work out and then not collecting it. So lots of wasted paper, um, obviously a cost to them which unless they um, came and questioned why they'd not got their print in, they'd just forget about it and then it'd charge them as well. Um, so obviously Select and Release took all that away. Previously, anybody who printed a couple of pages out it would come on two separate sheets. Uh, we introduced a method whereby they printed on both sides by default. We were looking at um, different ways that we could make savings in terms of paper, and one way that we looked at was to compress four pages of A4 sheets onto two. So essentially you've got two, um, two on this side of an A4 sheet and two on the back. And we advertised it across the university and it's been, uh, it's been a big hit. The uh, paper called Print Client uh, shows you how much a print job costs and gives you a running total of um, how many pages you've printed throughout the year. Um, and that brought home to staff the cost of printing in the university. It has reduced the amount of printing as a result. We've worked closely with our suppliers, Papercut and ITS, um, to develop new features in their software. Essentially what we developed was a means where if there was a problem with an MFD, it essentially recognises that there's an issue and stops anybody else releasing a job. So that's gone global now. And so the savings in terms of paper goes into the millions and millions and millions and we'll continue to do that. During our work on this strategy, we estimate we've saved over 20 million pages of paper. More than that, the tools we've put in place and the way we've engaged staff and students in changing behaviour has created advocates of sustainable ways of working and printing who will spread the word in their everyday lives and their future careers. And we're not done yet. We've talked to other universities about the work we've done and our strategy provides a template for similar institutions who want to ring the changes. We continue to collaborate with Papercut and ITS who highly value our involvement as a close partner, not just a customer, seeing us as a great source of ideas and support on how to improve their product, bringing both environmental, financial and security benefits to thousands of their customers worldwide. And here at Sheffield Hallam, this blueprint for Greenprint goes on developing. We're looking at ways to discover and approach individual staff who print heavily to find more sustainable and cost-effective ways to work. In future, we expect to have fewer multifunction copiers with the bulk of the university's printing going to an even cheaper, more cost-effective type of machine optimised for high volume work. Instead of automatically handing out lecture notes, we're encouraging staff to provide them electronically so only those who really need hard copies print them off. And best practice guidance for meetings dispenses with paper documents as a default option. There is still a lot to do, but we're geared up and ready to take this further with a group of passionate and committed staff supported by a network of green champions. Spurred on by the massive savings we've already made, we are looking forward to the next challenge. We're not slowing down, we want to keep going.